we've got European members and members in South America, for instance, and so on. It, if you send a magazine uh, by surface mail, it takes forever to get there. And then announcements for different base events and so on uh, are late. It's, it's too late to, to, to respond to them. So you send things first class, which is very, very expensive. But now uh, uh, with the Internet, it's, it, you, you can, it can become much more timely. Today's guest has been on the show multiple times in the past. I've known him for 25 years, a quarter century. I can't believe it. One of my favorite artists, super interesting person. I'm Jason Heath. This is Contrabase Conversations. And today's guest is Hans Sturm, the new president-elect for the International Society of Basis. And that was our excuse to talk today, although I never really need an excuse to talk with Hans. Love all the projects he's involved with. He's an artist in constant motion, for sure. And Hans actually brought me on the ISB board, invited me onto the board 12 years ago when he was the president. So this is his second go around as ISB president, which I think is the first time that's ever happened. So we talk about many things, but the key conversation topic is the International Society of Basis. Say that fast three times. Uh, The ISB, uh, where we've been, where we are and where we're going. We'll let Hans get into the details and a quick shout out to our sponsors, the people who keep the lights on here at Contrabass conversations. Thank you to Colstein Music, the Bass Violin Shop, Upton Bass, Steve Swan String Bass, and D'Addario Strings. More on them in a bit. And we'll be hearing a little bit of music I couldn't resist uh, because we have current president, about to be past president, Nicholas Walker, uh, who we've had on the podcast multiple times. And we have now today Hans Sturm. I found a recording of Hans playing a piece by Nicholas. It's pronounced, excuse my lovely French pronunciation, chasse à court, I think. Uh, sorry, apologies to French listeners. But it's uh, recorded at University of Nebraska, Lincoln, where Hans teaches. I thought it would be cool as an homage to presidents coming and going. So you'll hear a bit of that. And let's dig into this conversation with Hans Stern. <laughs> I'm so grateful to Hans uh, for for doing, well, many things over the years. But one is Hans uh, brought me on or was responsible for bringing me onto the ISB board back in, it was maybe 2007 or something like that, somewhere around then. Right. And that was during your presidency, I think, for ISB. Am I getting that right. timeline right? When, when were you originally president for the ISB? So I, I I would have come on a uh, bar. Uh, Phillips a- appointed me uh, in 2005. So that was uh, the president elect is two years. Mm-hmm. And then the convention would have been 2007 in Oklahoma City University with John Shimmick, who's c- currently the currently the president. And um, uh, I so what I really wanted to do at that at that point was um, to affect a little bit of a change on the on, on the board in order to move us um, technologically forward to, to, to get more interaction. So uh, I, I asked, invited you to come on the board uh, and Jeremy Kurtz, who had done some things uh, online and Douglas Mapp, of course, who has that, um, uh, you know, his, his terrific uh, 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 online business um, in an effort to try to, to try to push us forward. And, and that, I mean, thanks to you and I, I guess some, um, some deep conversations that you had with Madeline behind the scenes. And I was also uh, ch- trying to get uh, Frank Proto to speak uh, also uh, to, to, to get us to find ways to get those um, uh, earlier magazines to, to get that all online mm-hmm. so that we would have a searchable database, which um, uh, thankfully we have with uh, after uh, uh, George Vance um, died in, in, in 2009, that that became the Memorial Library mm-hmm. um, for him and uh, Andy Beckendorf, um, who was the uh, editor of the Base World Journal, I think, at that time, um, was very influential and found a company in, in Madison, Wisconsin, who would help us digitize things. And so that's, I think that's, uh, that's a terrific benefit to the, to, to, to the membership because we're able to then go back and investigate our history, um, it, which is fantastic. 
Well, it's yeah. something that I, I, I'm maybe in a unique position. Uh, well, maybe not that much because people are always wanting to do research and dig back and learn about what happened. But I use that library all the time for my podcast. Like yeah. I get on and I, oh, I'm going to chat with Orrin O'Brien. Let's go on to the Vance Memorial Library and type in Orrin O'Brien. And then you see through the years in the 60s, well, late 60s, oh, yeah. but 70s, 80s, 90s, the aughts even and finding articles about Oren and and um, I've used that countlessly and also it's got all our old convention programs so you can go back in time right. and something I did recently and it was really fun to do was I went back to the very first newsletter that Gary Carr put out uh, which, which is up there you know yeah, and, and it yeah. was really interesting to read that first newsletter and kind of see how though many things have changed for, for the ISB or for any organization over 50 plus years just to see what's remained the same too and like gary's like the spirit of what he wanted to do is still alive and it's it's okay. really it was really kind of a fun exercise to go back and and check out some of those early things which you can do if you're an isb member and and, and dig into all that right it's it's just it's just a wealth of stuff i mean i i, I think about those those earlier uh, earlier magazines um, with the base centerfold and, and the dis luthier discussions and of course different strokes where they were you know, uh, doing fingerings and bowings from a variety of, of, of uh, you know, terrific principal bass players from around the world. Mm -hmm. And you get differing opinions on, on how things should be done, which is just hilarious to me because you say, you know, we have to play this excerpt this way. And then somebody else says, you know, who's, who's a respected principal bass player says, well, actually, I do the opposite. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, was, I, it was always terrific. I have used that so much over the years personally to prepare for things and then also for students. I I I I, I, I had all those articles. Yeah, I mean, I've got I'm somewhere either here or at my parents' place. I've got all the old base worlds or old ISB journals. And then at some point I went through and I just copied them all and put them all in a three-ring binder. And now that they're all up online, it's great because I can just pull them up from that archive. And I was so happy to see that different strokes uh, feature come back. I don't remember exactly when it came back, but it was there for a while. Then it, it disappeared for a little while and came back. And it's, it's super interesting. And yeah, it's a good point because yeah, we, a lot of the time in the orchestral world, people sort of think there's one way to do Beethoven five, one way to do Brahms two. Uh, no, sir. There's, there's it's, and, and yeah, up bow, down bow, G string, D string. It's, it's, it's really fun to see the variety. Oh yeah. And, and, and you wind up with, with conductors doing crazy stuff. I mean, I, uh, just a few years ago, I did um, a, a Beethoven nine uh, with an orchestra, and the the conductor was like uh, rigid about Beethoven's markings, mm -hmm. so super fast tempos, and the recitative was in time, mm -hmm. which uh, you know is just like uh, I mean like <laughs> like like in time. I you know fortunately having you know having having worked on that for years, I could. I could kind of get through it, but I mean, for those who are used to trying to do, I mean, one of the things that we talk about, you know, or I talk about in lessons and that I've, that I've learned, when you have that uh, excerpt in an audition, part of the deal with that excerpt is it's, it's an effort to show how expressive you can be and still kind of make the shape and the form. And so, oh, not, 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 not with this conductor. It was, <laughs> it was just plowing through, you know, and then I think about, um, uh, what, one of my favorite uh, um, recorded versions is uh, Leonard Bernstein at the at the at the Berlin Wall, and he takes so much time. It's like the complete other side of the spectrum. <laughs> D da dump, bub. <laughs> Before you finally get the ode to joy. Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah. So. You know, if I think back, so like 2019, so like 12 years ago, you were president of ISB and, and just thinking about time and like, like that doesn't seem that long ago in a way, but in a way, I think, wasn't that the year the iPhone came out and I, I think Facebook wow. was just starting to maybe be opened up to people that weren't in academic environments. And I think Twitter came out in 2006. And I think MySpace was still where you went to post about your band and all this. I remember <laughs> promoting my MySpace page when I started the podcast, like really heavily. And that was 2007. So like so many things have changed. Um, and then you've been a part of the ISB for, for a real long time, but, but, you know, as a, as a member and then president and now, uh, president, president elect, um, like, 
and this is an impossible question, I guess, but like, let's just look at those 12 years and like, what has, what have, have you seen change maybe in the ISB? Um, where, where have we, where have we gone in those last 12 years? And again, apologies for the super vague open question. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it's, 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 it's a big question. I mean, and this is just, you know, uh, just one person's perspective, for instance, it's just, it's just me looking back and, and, and thinking, I guess, but I mean, uh, the, the organization has grown and become more sophisticated as the technology has grown and our, uh, and as all this stuff happens, the planet shrinks, right? When we think about, you know, how long it took to, we, we have this stuff in Nebraska, and I'm sure you had it in South Dakota, where there's, you know, people talking about crossing the plains and all of this stuff, and you drive for on Interstate 84 ever, you know, just feels like it's so flat and you're thinking about people crossing this in a horse. And, and, and the same thing happens with the ISB, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, in the, in, in Barry Green and, and, and Jeff Bradetich ran the ISB out of their offices at universities for, for years and years. And then with Madeline Crouch and things and things grow. And I think, um, uh, thanks to the work that uh, uh, Nicholas Walker has done, you know we're we're moving the board in 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 yet another direction. Where, you know, in the in the past, you know, up until this this past, I guess um, three three years or so, you know, the board was made up of people who were to represent uh, different areas of of base base them. Yeah. <laughs> I can't come up with a good word, but you know, a, a jazz player, a classical performer, uh, a professor of this, you know, and so you had people with different perspectives on uh, on the area of bass. Um, now we're moving towards a model where we're developing, working with teams, an idea of a marketing team and a uh, a technology team and governance team and so on. To because I think there's a sense that uh, we need some more. Uh, in terms of the board and 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 the way the ISB is moving, we need some people looking specifically into these areas where before on the board, all of us were kind of talking about kicking around the idea of promotion or marketing and 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 so on. And that it, it it can get it can get a little bit unwieldy from a board perspective when you have twenty twenty two people in a meeting with everybody chiming in on a particular subject rather than having these teams of folks working on things. So I think that's what's happening as the ISB has, has evolved is um, a, a kind of a, a movement. We need to have a little bit more sp specific people doing specific tasks, assigning specific tasks. And uh, rather than working as an, as an entire entity, as a board, this, this kind of idea is helping to grow the organization in a different way, just because of its size and and its international capacity. So it's a difficult, it's kind of a challenging question to answer in one way. But uh, you know, I think from the board and the way that things are organized, in some respects, it's still the same. We have the young bassists. We have lots of terrific performers coming. Um, our, our convention, you know, is very important. The magazine, those kinds of elements are still there. Um, the idea of now having the magazine, but doing more things online, connecting the magazine with more things online helps us to get information out further faster. I mean, this is one of the big, the big issues for, the, for a long time on the board was, you know, do you send, we've got European members and members in South America, for instance, and so on. It, if you send a magazine uh, by surface mail, it takes forever to get there. And then announcements for different base events and so on uh, are late. It's it's too late to, to to respond to them. So you send things first class, which is very very expensive. But now, uh, uh, with the internet, it's, it, you you can it can become much more timely. So I think that's we're we're headed more and more in that direction. What can we do more as a board and uh, be more uh, proactive as a community to to be able to post things to the ISB site, for instance, in different ways that are getting events out there and that's just starting to happen the, 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 even more and yeah, so on. No, so, I, I told, I told, yeah. I think that, that, that immediacy of communication, is something I've noticed a lot between uh, 2007, like when, when I, when I, I came on the board uh, and then now I remember, I don't think there were, 
I might be remembering this wrong, but I don't think there were any email updates from the ISB at that point. I think I got I think I got an envelope no. once a year to renew my membership, and I got the magazines. And then at a certain point, I don't remember when this was, um, but a, a, a few years into that, 2010, maybe 2009, I don't remember exactly. All of a sudden, I started getting updates from the ISB, and that email list has grown. And our membership's on the email list, but even if you're not a member, you can still be on our email list. We'd of course love to have you be a member, but it's a great way to just find out what's going on. On in the bass community. This episode is brought to you by Steve Swan String Bass. And Steve has been researching top regraduation for many years. Here's Steve on the topic. I found some old uh, diagram bass tops in an old violin making book that had violins, violas, cellos, and only four basses from kind of the classic period, the early 1800s. And I took a pattern of uh, kind of a topographical map of thicker in the center under the bridge and then, you know, the thinnest is right near the edges, you know, just before it flares out and gets strong again. And I put in some measurements that I thought would work and we use that as a general pattern for top graduation and it really works. You would be amazed how well this technique works. I've been impressed time and time again at how immediately a bass speaks after coming from Steve's shop and how resonant and beautiful and open the sound is. Learn more at steveswanstringbass.com and thanks for sponsoring the podcast, Steve. This episode is brought to you by D'Addario Strings. Our friends at D'Addario want to help listeners change their strings safely and efficiently and they have a few tricks to help you achieve that. When you pull the string through the peg, twist it around itself a few times before continuing to wind. This pulls more of the string through the peg neatly and it decreases the likelihood of the string falling out of tension. Learn more at orchestral.dedario.com and thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. This episode is brought to you by the Bass Violin Shop, which opened in 2001 as a small double bass workshop in Greensboro, North Carolina. Today, they're staffed by three full-time, highly skilled bass luthiers, and they specialize in double bass sales, rentals, setup, restoration, and repair. For nearly 20 years, they have satisfied thousands of clients by offering quality instruments, knowledgeable service, reliable repairs, and superior restorations at affordable prices. They recognize that that traveling and flying with the bass can be a serious obstacle. That's why they now offer several options for the jet-setting bassist. Either rent their removable neck bass for a no-hassle, convenient way to take a bass in a small package, or convert your bass to a removable neck and never be without your companion for those important performances. Purchase their lemur music, Liberty Bell Flyaway. This package includes an airline-friendly custom travel case, and in minutes you can disassemble the bass and you're ready to go. Contact them to chat about options and find the one that best fits you. For more information and current inventory, visit their website at BassViolinShop.com and be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram. It's it's crazy to think the world changes, like just the pace of change and like, you know, like, like especially like I, I am right now the marketing chair for the ISB and it's, so it's really interesting to look and like things have changed a lot since 2017. Even looking at, like I'm looking back at like how, how promotion was happening for the 2017 convention. Well, a lot of things that, that people were doing then aren't techniques that are even being used in 2019. That's two years. You know, there are new platforms coming on board. So <laughs> yeah, the, the pace of change is crazy. And to any, any membership organization, any nonprofit is try, trying to kind of figure this out. And I, I think you, you hit on a, I, I was uh, really um, impressed and, and just, ju it was, it was, by what Nicholas Walker had initiated with this board change. How did that all happen? Because all this stuff that we're talking about with the chairs versus the whole board together, it's really behind the scenes kind of, isn't it? It's something that like, we're still putting out right. the magazines, we're still doing the convention, but I feel my experience as a board member of the ISB is really different right now. Just like, when did that, when did that, what precipitated that, that ch conversation, that change? Well, I'm I'm not I'm not sure exactly. I mean, I, I, we had this we had this conversation. Um, uh, uh, I guess it was at the um, at the at the Colorado uh, 
at, at the Colorado Convention. And um, one of the things came up about about nonprofits and how things are run and best practice. The, 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 I think the phrase that, that came up that I remember is best practices. What is best practices? And uh, there are a couple of us. Um, uh, I remember pulling Nicholas aside and saying, you know, I work with this with, with this nonprofit, and you know there are things that we could do, and 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 so uh, Nicholas kind of got that, and he he was like, okay, so what can we do? And then uh, he contacted, you know, uh, a, a woman. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting her name, who came to the board and and uh, met with the board and 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 the, had this retreat and talked about, okay, these are the things that you want to do. You know, and 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 what what are you doing now to help make those things grow and beginning to understand that, oh, geez, you know, we're not really doing such a good job in these areas when somebody else comes in and looks at us from an organizational standpoint. And then we begin to take these ideas and say, OK, what are the most important things that we need to do? Well, we should have subsets of the board. And and f- for me, the, the thing that I that I had mentioned to to Nicholas because I just been through all this stuff with the Meadowlark um, Music Festival is you, you know there are basically two types of boards. There's um, an advisory board which tends to be quite large, and and then you have a smaller administrative set that gets things done, and then you have what's called a working board, where it's maybe ten to twelve people and everybody has. Uh, particular roles that they take on and they bring reports back to the full board, kick things around and, and, and then move. And I think the the ISB board has kind of had, had at that point kind of become an advisory board in a way. You know, it, we're trying to get things done, but ultimately who's who's going to do them? Well, we rely a lot on Madeline and, and, and on the um, and on the executive director uh, for a lot of initiatives to take place. And uh, Madeline's fantastic and gets a lot of things done. But more of us needed to get our oars in the water, I think. You know? And so I think it, when, when Nicholas went through that and, and the board had that retreat, kind of made these decisions, and then envisioned together what would the structure of the board, a more efficient structure of the board look like? And I think that was the, uh, that was the impetus of, of, of change for the board. So I think it's, I think it's all to the good. Um, uh, it's things, things are, things are, are getting done at a quicker pace. A lot of people are jumping on this, this move to base camp, I think is, was, was, was a very smart thing to do, um, to be able to communicate in different ways and different patterns and, and, uh, uh, bring people in to look at documents and so on. It gives us, um, uh, I, I don't mean the pun, but it gives <laughs> us a home base in a way electronically to go so we can have these meetings and get things done in between meetings, you know, that, that it, it, it helps us. It's, again, it's that idea of, you know, the technology can be very helpful to, 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 to yeah, move and, us forward. And, and what Hans is talking about, it's not base camp as in B-A-S-S camp, which we, we could have since we're all base players, right. but B-A-S-C, <laughs> like a base at a mountain base camp. And it's, it's, a, it's a piece of organizational software. It's super cool. A lot of tech companies use it. It's a, and it's, it's a way to have a, an institutional memory, let's say, or a, bo- or a board memory. And, and it's really useful when you're thinking, like, for example, oh, we're going to do our membership drive. Well, what did we do in past years? And you can go in and you can look at all of those documents. And, and that's an important thing to have especially any board you have people moving in and moving out so you always have somebody new somebody old and and just knowing how things were done how was the 2017 convention put together how is the 2019 convention uh, being put together you know those are great things to be able to refer back to and so the the more you have in one place um the you know the stronger you become and i remember i I used to be the illinois asta state chapter president i think this is every group has these problems was like where are all our old documents well i had them on like my work Google Drive, and then I switched jobs, and then it's like, oh no, <laughs> I forgot to transfer the acid. Oh. Well, luckily, we had another copy, but but just having something that's not tied to someone's personal Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever is a is a an important thing for a group like the ISB to have. And the and the great thing about this board structure that Hans is talking about is it kind of opens up, or not kind of, it it opens up opportunities for other people to get involved, for members who have an idea to get involved. So if someone says we need to do more to reach out to the Latin American based community, which is something that's happened. Um, we've been able to uh, pull people in who have the idea, who have the knowledge, who have the passion and the drive and give them that project. So you don't have to be elected to do 
to be more involved with the ISB. If you want to get more involved with the ISB, reach out to us, reach out to Hans, reach out to me, reach out to any board member and just say, hey, I've got an idea and we will work to make that idea happen. Right. We can, because we, the, the, the board is made up of chairmen of these, of these teams and board members often serve on more than one team. Uh, uh, but, but, but drawing people from, from, from the ISB community to uh, get involved with team projects, I think is, is exceedingly, well, it's vital because we're getting information from people in, in our organization, our community. And, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, as, as a, as a board person, I want people coming onto the board who have already have some kind of experience, understand kind of how things, how things go. And, uh, uh, and, and this helps, helps to um, facilitate yeah, all of for, that. For sure. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, um, we only know what we know, you know, even though we're, everybody in the board has a diverse uh, set of experiences, we're, we're not, we can't represent the, it's difficult for us, you know, few members to, to understand all the needs and, and, uh, in the base community. So, so it's just vital that people, uh, get involved beyond the actual core board members. And it's a great way to, to, if you want to eventually be on the ISB board or get more heavily involved, I mean, just, just come to us, talk to us. Uh, let's get a project going. And, and it's a great way for us to learn who, who really does want to, you know, dig in and get their hands dirty and work on something for right. weeks and months. Upton base has an interesting philosophy in terms of selling bases to people. Here's Eric of Upton on the top. I don't want to sell you one base. Right. I want to sell you like four. You know, when you're in high school or, or, or college or just starting out or you just, you know, 30 years been playing double base or electric base and now you're my, your first double base, you know, you're starting off with a $2,500 laminate. And then I, I want you to I want you to outgrow it. I want you to, to come back and say, now I'm ready for the hybrid. Or, now I'm ready for the, the solid wood base. Wherever you are on that trajectory, Upton has a base to meet your needs. Learn more at UptonBase.com. And thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. There are a lot of career options out there for musicians. And Barry Colstein of Colstein Music has some great advice about keeping your options open. I, I generally will tell anybody that goes off to, you know, go as performance, go after your dreams. But also prepare yourself, you know, because it's not always the easiest profession to to pursue. And I'm a firm believer that in life you you, you pick up as much knowledge as you can. Those are your armament in life, and you put them in your back pocket. You may never have to draw upon it, but it's a nice thing to have. Colson and Sons, for 70 years now, has been working to connect bass players with the finest instruments and help them achieve their goals and find those opportunities in their lives. Thank you so much to Barry and everybody at Colstein Music for sponsoring the podcast. So, and, and you're now president elect. So, so John Shimmick is has the next two years as president. But in in this now your your second go around as president, and now this different era, you know, over a decade later, like what's next for the ISB? Well, as 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 a president, you know, you're you're facilitating. Yeah. So it's 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 not necessarily coming you know top down. It's the vision of the organization. I think the the one thing that um, with these teams, the one thing that I think I, that I would that I would want to see. So, for instance, something that we're working on um, uh, with this little music festival, uh, and we're talking about a small, you know, we're talking about a week long festival, but trying to have a longer term plan involved. I mean, when I got involved with with this little music festival, um, they were just coming out of out of out of bankruptcy. So we, we, in, in the short term, we just needed to get our, our feet back on the ground in order to, in order to keep things, in order to keep the lights on, in order to keep the festival going. Um, we, we had a challenge in the, um, in the, in the, with the ISB um, in 2007, you know, we were starting to already feel what was happening with the huge downturn in the markets and what was going on there. So I think, you know, being aware of that now, fortunately for the ISB, we have the world's greatest treasurer in in in, in Marcel Villefort. I mean, my goodness, this guy digs. We talk about that that overused phrase, you know, deep dive. He gets into looking at all of the numbers and how things are impacting one and so on. So we have this uh, uh, terrific treasurer and can figure out what's happening with these numbers. But what what I would like to see us do. Um, uh, it, not just looking with that rear view mirror and saying, what have we done in the past? 
to help inform us in the future, but where would we like to go? What would we like to see happen? So one of the things that I would like to see happen for the for the, for the board anyway going ahead is maybe a, a, a kind of a five-year plan or because we run in two years, maybe a, maybe a six-year plan, something like that. Um, where do we need to strengthen things? How do we become more stable? Um, what kinds of things would the um, – uh, would, the, would the board like to see? Mm-hmm. And so I think uh, some, something in place to help guide our decision making uh, rather than um, very often, dis- I to say, say very often, that's too much, but sometimes decisions get made based upon what we see right in front of us rather than taking that longer view. So I'd like to see uh, that kind of plan um, come into place. We spoke about this this idea of, of base camp, and I think for me the idea of, of community building, um, how can we help more people do more in their base communities? How can, how, how can the ISB help facilitate things? And, uh, uh, you know, along those lines, you know, kudos to, to you because all of the work that you've done – with, I mean, I think back to just even the um, uh, the Bratitich competition and all of the outreach that you did. You really made that. You brought that into my home. I would never. I couldn't go. But you know what I mean. That that kind of you 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 bring that sense of base community. Even though we're all in far flung places, you bring it all into 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 our homes. The work that you did just recently in Spain. Again, you know, I mean, all of these these kinds of things. So looking for opportunities to bring the base community together and make us all um, make us all stronger. You know, that's that's super important. And then uh, we, we spoke speak about the, um, uh, the the impact of the ISB, you know, making it more accessible to more to more folks. That's partly community building, but I think partly, you know, the online and, and how do we get to support to um, other areas, other geographic areas. You know, how do we reach out? It, folks can't all come to the convention. It's expensive. It's difficult to be there. If we can provide some streams in some way, if we can if we can raise some hard scholarship dollars to, to really bring deserving people, uh, you know, one thing that people don't, uh, well, I can't say, sometimes they don't understand is that, you know, when performers come to play at the ISB, they come on their own dime. When board members come to ISB meetings, they come on their own dime. You know, now some some folks have uh, are lucky enough to have uh, uh, to be at an institution that will pay their way because they think that it's that think that it's important. But in some cases, that's 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 not true. When I was at Ball State, that was true at at at, at University of Nebraska. Uh, that's that's not the case anymore. I, I pay my I pay my own way to come. And then I think lastly, we just we touched upon this is the the you know the long term financial health. What can we do to help ensure because. You know, in that in that period when I was when I was president and just just before and just after that 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 downturn, you know, people we rely a lot on 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 membership dues. That's a big a big part of of the organization. When we have a convention, um, money comes in because people are buying memberships in order to attend the convention, and so we are flush. But then very often we see a drop off. That that that's normal. People are not at the convention. It's an off year. Oh, I, I let it. I let it lapse. Maybe I'll come back to it. Maybe I won't. Um, and and this is the truth for for all nonprofits. We're working on this. I have a meeting this afternoon with uh, some some potential donors uh, for the little chamber music festival. What can we do for those people that have the means to help ensure, you know, the perpetuity of the organization to to help this going? You know, the young basis, the ones that we really want to support. And we've done a lot of good work. What can we do to continue to help that help that structure? So I, there's a lot of stuff in that, and, and and I don't have answers to you know specific answers to any of that. But these are these are things that I would like to see happen for the yeah. These are these are these are uh, challenging uh, uh, issues, and they're not easy answers for any of this. But it's but but if if anyone's a good person to, to usher this organization you know into the next few years, it's Hans. Uh, you, you know, and I, I lo- well, and I uh, I just love seeing all the projects you've done. You're one of those people that I that I love I, I love. 
you have such a, a, a varied set of projects that you're passionate about over the years. And I mean, from <laughs> working with Francois Rabat, the art of the bow, art of the left hand, um, to, to all your, your the albums and, and, and just everything you do. I, 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 you're one of those people that is loving the bass community. I think is super interesting. I always appreciate a chance to hop on and, and chat with you or in person is even better, but I'm sure we'll do, do some more of this, uh, uh, about the ISB and other topics on the podcast, but just thanks, thanks for everything you do, and it's it's fun to twelve years hence, oh. you know, uh, be be, be oh, working yeah. with you on this still. Well, we we I mean, uh, speaking, of, I'm, I'm on sabbatical mm-hmm. right now, uh, and so uh, I've 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 got uh, speaking of projects, uh, uh, we're just finishing uh, um, a, a thirty minute concert with with Jackie. Uh, with my wife, a uh, jazz singer, and um, Bob Shepard is playing tenor on it. You may know Bob from his work with Joni Mitchell and uh, Herbie Hancock and so on. Anyway, that, that's just been approved uh, by PBS, a 30-minute special from this live concert. So um, it's, it's coming out through NET, which is the Nebraska Educational Television, we think, in the fall. And then it'll go to NETA, which is the um, a distribution arm of, mm. of PBS. And uh, so uh, once that happens, I'll, I'll – I'll, I'll call you and say, you know, hey, if you'd like to see Jackie on your local PBS station. <laughs> that would be great. Gonna, but yeah. anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna, we got we have a 30-minute version of that. We're going to make an hour uh, a, a DVD of that. Um, and uh, I'm working on uh, um, uh, two, two recordings. Uh, there's always stuff, a duo with Jackie based on Nebraska composers and a um, solo bass CD and um, – Speaking with Rabath and going back and working with him, and um, uh, we were talking, and I was thinking of, for the sabbatical, I would do a, a pedagogical project with him, another pedagogical project, and we started to work on that. And then uh, he uh, he showed me his uh, his little biography that he had written of himself. It was very very sweet. Um, uh, but it was like as we started working on the pedagogical project, this biography kind of became bigger and bigger and bigger. So. Um, it looks like uh, I'm working on a biography with Francois wow. um, to get that out there. So um, we'll see how, how how long it takes. But this is exciting, and he's sharing all these all these photographs and these stories, uh, un- unbelievable stories. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'll be excited wow. to share to share that. So if anybody out there's got a cool story um, uh, about Francois that they would like to share, um, please feel free to. to to find, you can find me on the University of Nebraska uh, website and email me, and I would be delighted yeah, to, to hear from you. Yeah, definitely reach out to Hans about that. And I want to chat about all those projects. So um, you're, you're, let, let, let's let's do it. I, I can't wait. It's great to talk with you about about uh, Rosefinger Dawn or the ISB or any any of these uh, any of these things. And I just I love how how active you are, and and I just love following with your following along with your creative pursuits. So it's just. Good times, man. Uh, <laughs> J- Jason, thank you for everything you do. <laughs> Thanks, Hans. Hans, so great to chat with you. Learn more about Hans. Hansturm.com is his website. Of course, International Society of Basis, ISBWorldOffice.com. If you're not following along with the ISB on whatever social channel you hang out at, Instagram, Twitter, I guess, uh, or Facebook, you can find us there. Follow along and... I'm having a good time being involved on the board again for a round two. Hans is back on for a round two as president, and we'd love to have you in the ISB. Come join us. Join us this summer. It's not too late. Early June at Indiana University. You're going to be hearing a lot of content on the podcast from that. I have a full week of chats for this, which I am greatly looking forward to. And it's a good place to hang out. It's a good place to be a part of. It's a good group to be a part of. I've been a part of it since I was in my teens. And I think it's the longest professional association I have. Yeah, it's got to be right. I think I said that in this episode. Anyway, Thanks for following along. Sorry, (laughs) I can't talk today. Following along. And you can reach out to me 
feedback at ContraBaseConversations.com with any ideas for the show. And ContraBase Conversations is produced by Michael Cooper, Steve Hinchy, Trevor Jones, and Mitch Mooring. Mitch is making beautiful bases in the Dallas area. Learn more at MitchMooring.com. And thank you to Krista Copper for archiving and cataloging all of the topics we talk about. And you're going to be hearing her on the podcast about her new podcast, which is very cool. You're going to be hearing that in the next couple of weeks. I'm your host, Jason Heath, and we will see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum.